Welcome back everybody, High Tech Lab here. We are installing the solar on the roof of our lab and a little bit has changed since we've made our last video on the lab build series. If I walk over here, you can see we moved another container over here. We have quite a few of those. So this one was in a space over here. It was about 20 feet away, so we just drug it over. That's that dirt spot there. But anyway, we're gonna cover this entire roof space in solar. So what we've already gone ahead and done is we've welded on some Unistrut, and that's this right here. Just welded it down to the roof of the container every two to three feet or so. And then this container here has shallow strut. Reason being, there's a little bit of a difference in height between these two containers and uh, the deep strut on this container makes up for the difference in that. Now the racking we're gonna be using is over here. This is Iron Ridge XR100 rail. So here is the profile view of that. And this is a beautiful rail. We're very happy with this rail. So the rail is going to be running in this direction across. Um, these are 14 foot rails. So that's why there's a gap between these containers because it's about 28 feet from outside to outside. And uh, when these rails run, it's gonna be perfect. Now I opted to use the Unistrut because we have these brackets over here. And let me show you these. These are gonna bolt down to the Unistrut like that. And then the rails are gonna go on it right here. And the reason we went with the Unistrut is because in the future, we may use different solar panels. So I'll show you the solar panels here in a minute, but we wanna have proper planning in case we do end up changing those panels that we can easily adjust all of these rails without needing to drill new holes in the roof of the container. So this was a great solution to prevent having any holes in the container and uh, make things nice and waterproof as well as structurally sound without a million of these L brackets. So uh, we're just gonna put strut nuts in the channel um, and then bolt on those L brackets, run all of those rails, which will be coupled together in the middle, and then we'll be throwing down our solar panels. So let's go look at those solar panels now. Okay, so these are the solar panels we're going to be using. Now let me show you in here. We bought these last September and have kind of been delaying to install them. You can see them here. Now these are technically used panels. Uh, it's a long story. So some of you guys may have heard about the Trina solar panel recall, and that's what these are. So if you look on the box, they're Trina solar panels. But if you look at this label, you can kind of see in the sun, there's actually a label underneath these with a bigger label put over them. These panels, I should have never been able to buy. These panels should have been sent for recycling and been destroyed. What happened is Trina Solar had a massive recall on these because this part of the panel right here that you see, this is called the back sheet. These back sheets were failing and allowing moisture into the panels and that would cause poor performance with the panels. So whenever you see Trina Solar panels that have the, the brand name on the box, but don't say Trina Solar on the sticker and have that little bit of a bump on here, um, those are not good panels. So let's take a look at what can happen. I have some on my other solar system over here, so let's go take a look. And uh, yeah, these have been sitting out all winter uh, in the wind, in the rain. We had one catch flight and uh, it shattered. So if you ever wanted to see a shattered solar panel, well, there you go, tempered glass. It only takes a little bit and once they're shattered, they're done for. So these are on my other array, and when you take a look down at these traces, you can see they look somewhat oxidized. And that's not really a problem for a while. They'll work just fine for a long time. But then, you know, as the moisture gets in there and uh, affects them, it can start causing a uh, series arc if it corroded too much. And uh, you're gonna start tripping your ground fault protection and all sorts of things. So in the case of what we're doing, we're using a Solark 12K as our solar inverter, and uh, it could start tripping the protection. Now we haven't had an issue on this array because we built all of this racking out of wood. And yes, I do need to weed it. You can see we sprayed uh, Roundup in front of them, but the weeds are a little overgrown. So we've had no problems with this array on the wood racks, but if we put it now on the metal racks on the new system, 
we may start seeing ground fault issues. And it's even been reported that these failing back sheets have caused a fire. But we're on the roof of a metal container. If something goes wrong, it's not going to catch anything on fire. And, uh, you know, a little bit of risk there, but it's like a one in, you know, one in a million chance that that's going to happen. And even if it does happen, it's not the end of the world. But, uh, yeah, definitely a concern. So that's why I'm building the racking in such a way that it could be changed in the future if we get new panels. And when you look at the price we paid for these panels, we paid about 65 bucks a panel, and these are 250, I think 270, somewhere in there. That's the size of the, the wattage of the panels. And it's a good price, but right now the price of solar is coming down so much that it's not even worth our while to mess with the used panels. We just have them and I can't consciously sell these to someone because then it's, you know, passing on the burden and I would never feel good doing that. So I'm just gonna use the panels as long as I can. And if I have an issue, I'll take them all down. By then they will have gotten us our money's worth and uh, we'll have them destroyed or um, be 100% honest with whoever buys them, what the situation is and uh, what's going on and why we're taking them down. So anyway, if you guys haven't seen the video on building these racks, uh, it's on the channel. We'll put a card in the top corner. Uh, oh, and you can see there's some more wind damage. We're on the top of the hill. You can see, I mean, the wind has no problem building up around here. So uh, this rack over here actually took flight completely. And this rack was the first four big panels we had. These are Renogy, uh, I think 275 watt panels. These are monocrystalline and beautiful. And uh, you can see this one definitely had an issue where it took flight and this panel got cracked. So we're like the solar abusers. Here's a spec sheet for those of you interested. 260 watt panels. And uh, yeah, so this is our current solar array. So we're gonna be effectively doubling our capacity by putting in this new array. And we're just gonna AC couple it to our Solark in the other electrical room because our lab is about 200 feet away and we don't wanna run DC lines that far. So anyway, uh, we're gonna get some of that racking mounted and meet you back on the container.